Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. And all the way from Columbia, South Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, Blue Nose the Bully. Make sure you check him out, Blue Nose the Bully on YouTube. Uh, but let's take it back, man. Uh, what hood do you represent? You know what I'm saying? We're neighborhood of the 40 Crips. Okay. And talk to me, I guess, to the best of your knowledge about how the Rolling 40 Crips made it to Columbia, South Carolina. All the way to the East Coast. So, uh, basically with us, man, you, mean, you, you got so many different ways people went about doing that. Like, you know, ever since I was a kid, before I was even really, you know, actively gangbanging, uh, you had, like, you know, all these guys that was claiming these gangs from California. And I guess you would say, you know, it wasn't really them so much that weren't really with it or, you know, stop that action or what you might say, but, like, it was just their connections that weren't really there. So you had a lot of cats running around banging, rolling 90s, rolling 60s, uh, Hoovers, you know what I'm saying? All these gangs that obviously originated in, in California, but, uh, you know what I mean? They, they just weren't really on board like that. And slowly but surely, you started getting a little bit, you know, here and there, uh, you know what I'm saying, cats that were connected. Like, you got the 90s, uh, OG Freeze, rest in peace, was a close homie of mine, you know what I'm saying, really was connected to California. And you got Big U, you know what I'm saying, it was a really, really known big homie from the six O's on the West Coast. He, uh, he's got a lot to do with the South Coast 60s. You know, you got the South Coast 60s down there in the South right now, mm. going crazy from Texas to, you know, Georgia. And that's all because of you and whatnot. Um, and then eventually reached South Carolina as well. Now with me, you know, me and all my boys and shit like, you know, for instance, you watch Respect the Glove and all those boys you see, those are no randoms. Those are all, I, I look at them like my kids more than my brothers. You know what I mean? Like I really raised these dudes and, you know, we grew up with each other and uh, put each other on that type of path. You know what I mean? And we was doing our own little thing. You know what I'm saying? We had our own little clique. We just, we just neighborhood crips. We didn't know what we was doing. We was just young and stupid and didn't even know what the purpose behind it was. Didn't know what Crip really was. Nothing. You know what I'm saying? Just young and stupid. Um, you know, then I was about 14 years old. My big brother, he was uh, born in California. His name is Big Mop, you know, Boot Mop. I'm Tiny Mop and shit. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, he was from California. He he was uh, actually from California, rolled the 40s and whatnot. So uh, that's definitely what separates me and everybody else because everybody else is just kind of doing their thing and just kind of try to copy what everybody else is doing. But rather with me, I actually went, you know what I'm saying, and actually been to LA. I've been, I'm known in Los Angeles, California, uh, all the way from there to. You know, Connecticut, New York, and Georgia, and all these places, Tennessee, like, just everywhere you can imagine, you know, that we actually do have official chapters, you know what I'm saying? I started, you know, doing my thing and whatnot, and, uh, you know, push come to shove, I, between the age of 14 and 17, I was just doing my shit, man, and, you know, what my brother, seeing what I was, <clears throat> what year what? What year time frame when you were, like, 14 and 17? When I was 14, that would have been about... That would have been about 2009. Okay. Yeah, about 2009. Okay. So, yeah, you know, uh, at that, yeah, we, I, I was just fucking with my brother, man. And, you know, he just kind of was seeing what I was doing. and didn't really want me to be out there being stupid with it. Like, he, I guess he was looking at it like, man, you know, he, they got their own little thing going. But I don't want him to get, you know, run into the wrong person and end up getting hurt over this, mm -hmm. you know, because he doesn't know exactly what he's doing. Or he might run into somebody from California that sees he's neighborhood cripping. But they don't really like the way they're going about it. So that's really when my brother, you know, kind of pushed the card with us. You know, it was like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring you home and we're going to do it like this. And you know what I'm saying? So, like I said, you know, between 14 and 17, I was just going crazy with it and ended up, uh, you know, going back home from the West Coast. I stayed a few years bouncing back and forth. Like, you know, I went to L.A. a few times. Uh, I got a lot of family out here on the West Coast in general and stuff, Arizona and Utah, California, everywhere. So, uh you know, I went up going back home and shit and just telling the boys what it was, you know, like, and hey, look, you, you can be on board or not be on board, but you know what I'm saying? It's, we, we're about to push this 40 shit, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. the homies was all with it. We started doing our thing and, you know what I'm saying? is getting our name out there like everybody else, you know what I'm saying? And it, it went from when we was, you know, little young cats, people was like, oh, well, who are, who are them? And what are they about to, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Now it's known. It ain't no questions asked. Like, oh, 40 okay. So, you know, that's blue nosing them boys down there. So, you know, it's, it's been a long time coming and, 10 years plus pushing, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we've been banging way longer than that. But, you know, 10 years plus that, you know, we've been hectic, you know what I'm saying, with with uh, staying on top of that, you know, pushing and making sure it's known. Like, 
You know, we're, we're, we're bigger than that. You know what I'm saying? We ain't, it's not like we just low life. That's all we do is gang. That's all we care about. We all, you know, we got businesses. We do a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? We're very business oriented. Like, you know, even myself, I run a jiu-jitsu school. Most people wouldn't expect that, but, you know, that's what I do. And uh, the homies love that. You know what I'm saying? I even got some of the homies from the hood doing it. So, you know, we yeah, really business oriented people. Yeah, you know, and family oriented is, is, is the most important part that we push. But, you know, uh, yeah, as I said, there was a lot of California gang where I'm from, you know, even before all that happened. So we really had to kind of jump out there and put our foot on people's necks to make it happen. What I understand, and of course this comes from gangland, I'm sure you've watched the same episode. But from what I understand that before then, because, you know, 2009 was 10, 11 years ago. But before then, was is it safe to say that Columbia was mostly a blood city? Definitely, definitely. So yeah, 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 definitely. Hey, you you don't got no misunderstanding there, man. Everybody uh everybody always thinks, Oh well, is it just gangland making it look like that it's the bloody south and stuff and or you know what nah, it really was, man, for sure. Like even my neighborhood, you know, the video Respect the Glove where we recorded that at, that's my neighborhood where I was born and raised, still you know, still got a, a house owned over there that my family's in and everything. Really ain't no getting no realer, you know you know basically back in them days bro i made when i was about between the age of five and ten i was growing up and i was seeing you know four or five you know what i mean different uh, older blood homies that were out there they were cool you know it wasn't no issues but you know we were young little you know lokes and shit and they didn't we didn't ever look at it like you know it was issues because in the south it's a little bit different it's down there people try to really be more closer to pushing the peace card it's like okay well as long as we don't got our problems, it ain't no problem. You know, rather than L.A., it was always, oh, you're from that block, that's a problem. Yeah. You know, in the South, it was easier to get along. You know, all the Crips, it wasn't until about maybe 10 years ago where Crips started, like, beefing harsh with the other uh, Crips and whatnot, where we was actually making it like, oh, well, we ain't going to beef with other Crips just because they're doing it in Cali because that's stupid and da 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 you know, and we were the younger, you know, the young crazy bug uh, generation that was looking at it like, well, we're following their, their rules and guidelines, so we're going to go all the way through with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, there ain't no point in us claiming neighborhood crib, us claiming 40, 60, 90, all these California address gangs if we're not going to really abide by those rules and regulations. You can't say, oh, I'm a rolling 60, but I love the Hoovers. It just don't work like that. It just, it's just, it's, it, it just looks funny. So, you know, it's just kind of different ways you got to go about it and shit. You know, like, yeah, it definitely was a predominant blood territory, you know, and then slowly... But surely the GDs, the GDs are definitely the biggest gang in the South. Uh, right, I'd probably right even now. say the nation. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah, 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 like definitely, that, definitely. Yeah, yeah, the GDs, man, the the folks, are, those are the homies. You know, like in mm -hmm. the West Coast, it's kind of like a like a hit and miss with them. It's like, you know, yeah. sometimes you get along, sometimes you don't. Mm -hmm. But in the South, we've always looked at it like the GDs and the Crips are really, really close. You know what I mean? Like we look at each other like cousins. So, you know, it was really never no issues with any of the GDs. It was just all the blood. So we had to, you know, slowly but surely push them all back, you know, and don't, you know, don't get me wrong. I got a, a select handful of homies that are real close to me that are bloods from, you know, like nine tray and, uh, you know, 135 treetop or, uh, excuse me, one, uh, 135 pot rule. And then you got like a few treetop homies and stuff. They're cool. You know what I'm saying? But we really did definitely have to put a stamp on it. Like, you know, it's it a lot of blood, man. And, took years and years and years of pushing it, and now everybody looks at it like it's the neighborhood south because everybody wants to be from neighborhood all of a sudden what nationality are you um so i'm a predominantly italian i got a little bit of other things in my jeans but uh yeah I'm, i definitely push the italian car because yeah. you know i'm a mama's boy or whatnot mama brought me up so yeah you're the second uh you're the second italian crip we've had on this show first dude i'm um, a boy super cuz who spent shit for like tw 20 years in and in and out of prison while I went through the process and you had to be there a few days, your paperwork, catch up, all the bullshit. But basically, they put me out there to see how the line was going to take me. So first thing pop up is a white boy. Hey, brother, get the fuck away from my cell door. I ain't your fucking brother. Uh, he did, He was confused as shit. And I was like, look, cuz I'm a crip. I'm out of stock. You know, from the East Coast. Get the fuck away from my door with that bullshit. He's a cool dude. But yeah, he, he was talking to us about what it was like being an Italian Crip, and let's just keep it real, you'd be called a white Crip. Um, what, yeah. What, what, what was it like being a, a, an Italian dude in a predominantly, you know, black gang? Um, in all honesty, man, this might sound like, you know, some BS to most people, but I really never dealt with any problems until I moved, bro. I mean, like, literally from born and raised all my life in Columbia, South Carolina, bro. You know, I was born in a complete black neighborhood. It might have been one other white family besides us. Um, 
never dealt with any of that, bro. You know, all the people I came up with, they looked at me just like, you know, they accepted me like theirs. You know what I mean? Like, I, I can even recall times back in the day, and this was no bullshit. When I was real, real, real little, the homies, uh, they would get mad at me if I didn't, you know what I'm saying, accept myself at that. Like, they would get mad at me if I tried to, you know, speak on myself as if I was any less. So, you know, opposed to you do got, you know, white boys that's going to deal with that problem, you know, and whatnot. Like, with me, it wasn't really never an issue. I was, it was pretty uh, it was pretty smooth of a ride coming up being, you know what I'm saying, a non-black member of a Crip gang. You know, obviously, uh, you know, when you look at things like Crip Blood, these are, you know, originated from black pride, you know what I'm saying, movement. So uh, you, you, you do have, like out here, for instance, right now, you know, I'm actually posted uh, in Salt Lake City and shit. I got a lot of family out here and whatnot. So you got gangs out here, man, like Crips and Bloods. The full, the full hood, their whole hood will be damn Mexicans and white boys. Mm -hmm. And it's a Crip gang, you know, and I'm looking at it like, damn, like even me, it might sound crazy coming from me because I'm, I'm Italian, I'm a white boy, but that looks dumb to me. You know what I mean? It's like, I understand you got an exception sometimes. And I understand that I was that exception, you know what I mean? But it, just making it to where a whole entire hood, you know what I mean? It's just nothing but, it's you know, consisted of white boys and Mexicans. I, don't, I just don't really see, you know, how that's, uh, how that goes about. But when I was about 15 years old, I went to L.A. Uh, my big brother wanted to show me what it was like and whatnot. And he ended up getting locked up and doing like eight years. He's actually just now getting out recently. Went back in. You know what I'm saying? He, he ain't doing no better. But, um, you know, he was introducing me to a lot of the originals and, you know, trying to get me in there and stuff. And, you know, there was a few homies, not even the older ones, though. None of the older homies. All the older homies from the hood accepted me. All the 40s from L.A. always loved and accepted me. There was a few of the tiny lokes, you know, the young bucks that was that was uh that would see me and be like oh not so much that they didn't accept me but they just wanted to see where my head was so you know I, I would have to like you know maybe throw hands with a few people who didn't really like uh where i came from or didn't really like that yeah. my, my my nationality so That's what I was you know say. i definitely yeah. threw down over it a few times yeah. but you know that, that was yeah that, he, that wasn't an issue man the white dude of the group he's probably had to prove himself twice as as much as yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. in that group so let's keep it real i'm sure you had this yeah. a few times <laughs> explain how it works when you travel to different cities and you know you're pushing the rolling card or whatever uh, do you do you um you know link up with the local rolling folks you know see make calls before you get in town try to just lo stay low key what's your personal way to, to handle the situation um Definitely just depends on where I'm going. Like, did the, the, today's, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's going on, bro? We're, you know what I'm saying? I don't like, really like to say too much, but at the same time, you know, ain't nothing wrong with, you know, stating the obvious. We're everywhere, mm -hmm. literally everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're all over the map. There's some places where we do not exist officially. So if I was to go there, it's just whatever. I'm on vacation. But any place where I know for a fact, okay, we got homies there, I definitely get in tap with, uh, get, uh, you know what I'm saying, tap in with them because. It's the same way with me, you know what I'm saying? Literally, I can, for example, two days ago, uh, random homies, uh, I can't remember if they was 40s or 60s, but uh, one of their, you know, higher, you know what I'm saying, members that hit me up like, hey, man, there's a, there's a rolling 40 out here, says he's from South Carolina chapter, blah, blah, blah. I just want to, you know, hit you to make sure he was official, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I was like, all right, cool, what's his name? And he was like, oh, he kind of called himself Blind Look or whatever, you know, whatever the fuck he said his name was. And I was like, hey. Man, I, I run a tight ship over here, bro. We're all family. Ain't no motherfucking blind loke from <laughs> South Carolina for you, bro. Oh, and, RIP blind loke. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> right. So, you know, it, it was one of the things where it was like, damn, man, like oh, that quick man. in a in snap of a finger. Wow. You know what I'm saying? You found yeah. out like, nah, nigga, yeah. it, it, don't, it don't go like that. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. definitely anytime I, I hit a city that's got the homies in it, you know, I'm going to tap in and try to link up with them because. I'm real, real in tune with him, especially uh, Select Hand for you, you know what I'm saying? Like, tiny white boy from the, you know what I'm saying, Connecticut, you know what I'm saying? I got homies, uh, Freaky Low, see, for all these different homies from Tennessee, different homies in all these different places, you know what I'm saying? But, for sure. Okay. Talk to me about what you know about the history of the, the Mexican gangs in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. Oh, man, Mexican gangs. So, uh, in all honesty, we we had a little, you know what I'm saying, sprinkle here and there of a few Mexican homies that would uh, bang, like, you know, a few different Trece gangs. You had, like, a couple, you know, I, I would probably more call them one of these just because you could tell they weren't connected. They didn't have no homies or no hood or set down there with them. They was just, oh, I'm here, I'm Mexican, I'm not going to roll with them, so I'm going to claim my own shit. So kind of seemed like one of them type of situations. You had a, a few homies I was banging the Trece, 
Uh, I remember in high school, I can recall this one dude coming from Northern California, banging North Benio, and uh, you know what I mean? He was trying to come down there and kind of push it on people and get other Hispanics with it. He didn't care what it was, Puerto Rican, Mexican. He, he was like, oh, you're Hispanic? I'm going to take you, you know like. So there was like a there was times off and on where we had a few uh you know run-ins with some Hispanic gangs, but more than Mexicans, it would be the uh I don't want to say it wrong and shit. I hate when people say my damn shit wrong. No, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, what's the race? The El Salvadorians oh, yeah, or yeah. something? Yep, yep. El Salvadorians. You got it right. Yeah, yeah, yep. El Salvadorians, man. They they kind of came and flushed uh Colombia. No, more of this area called Percival Road is like a a huge you know dirt road trailer park type area you know what i mean and the, the el salvadorians they come and flooded up in there man and out of nowhere we just seen all these el salvadorians banging 18th street and banging ms13 and they did not like each other you know like the serenos didn't like the uh the 18th streets down there um they was kind of separating themselves and the ms13s didn't like the 18th streets either even though they was both really el salvadorians down there um they was kind of getting into it with each other um kind of weird because you know on the west coast it probably most likely wouldn't happen but you uh the neighborhood cribs don't really too much function with the 18 streets like that but down there we actually was really really close really really close um you know all their leaders and stuff they all went to high school with me so you know what i'm saying us with the 18 streets we were real real cool um it wasn't really like a gang to gang type thing it was just a homie on homie thing like we, before the gang shit we was homies uh, you know, before all that as a man, you know what I mean? So it just kind of ended up like that. Us with the 18th Street was cool, but everybody else, it was, it was kind of like a problem. We didn't really too much uh, like the Serenios down there and whatnot. And, you know, it's just the way they was rolling. It was in a predominant black territory. So they was all for trying to look like, you know, oh, we're those crazy Mexicans. We'll fucking cut you. You know, you're from a black gang. You're from anywhere, but our side will fuck you up. So they was trying to, you know, kind of have that, California Mexican gangbanger mentality. Yeah, I guess you would say. So, you know, we was we was all for the problems with them. Let's let's jump in a little hip hop if I can keep you for about ten more minutes. Um Right. I wanna talk about something specifically that hit LA really hard and I'm curious to know how it hit Columbia, South Carolina, especially because he was pushing the rolling card also. But how did South Carolina take the death of Nipsey Hustle? Oh, man. Um, I would definitely say no differently than the West Coast because California definitely has a huge, huge impact and inspiration on South Carolina. As a matter of fact, a lot of people always think I'm from L.A. because I got a huge L.A. tattoo on my face, but that's because the nickname of our territory is, you know, Little L.A. We call it that because, you know, you got our gang right there, all the 40s right there, and if you go all the way to the right, where, you know, Greenview down the road is still connected to Fell Road and whatnot, um... You got the roll in the 90s, you know what I'm saying? So we're, we really are, you know, kind of set up how California would be, and that's where that name came about. So, you know, when Nipsey died, man, um, first off, I'll say with, you know, no hesitation, I cried, man. I, yeah, as same. soon as I heard oh, it, God. I teared up yeah. like a baby. Yeah. I, I definitely did. And, um, you know, I, I love Nipsey Hussle, man. He's the one that made me want to get the big NH tatted on my traps, on my shoulders and stuff, because, you know, he's got that and... uh you know, it, it, it was just crazy for me, bro. Like, all of my little homies was devastated. I was getting calls after calls after calls. And, you know, this just, just devastation, man. Like, I, I guess I wouldn't, I guess I can't quite go as far as to say it was as big as an impact on the South as it was the West Coast because that's where he's from and that's where it was, you know, it was crazy there. But, uh, yeah, man, I mean, it, it was definitely just, it was just pure sadness, man. Like, it was just there's a goddamn wave of sadness down there. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you. With every, with everybody too. Just like how on the West Coast you had like you know uh, people from VNZs and you know brands, all these different hoods coming together. You know the Eight Trades, the Hoovers, everybody was out there together just for momentarily. Yeah. Uh, you know they were letting that happen. It was the same thing in the South, man. Uh, same thing, same thing. Everybody was coming together for it. Beautiful thing for such a tragic situation. Another tragic situation uh, that just happened recently is. We lost an up-and-coming uh, rapper. I wasn't too familiar with this music, but everybody says dude was was definitely gonna um, you know be the next to blow. But he got shot out in L.A. out here in the Hollywood Hills. Dude by the name of Pop Smoke. I'm sure you know the story. Um, yeah, being yeah. A rapper yourself. What are your thoughts about how people should move when they are in cities? You know that. Um, they're not familiar with and they are banging a color right 
Man, that's that's a good question right there, man. I've I've always asked myself what I would do when it comes to those times, because, you know, because of that. So that's a really good question. Um, best thing that I could say, man, is you you really got to humble yourself. You know, like you're you're not 13 or 14 years old no more. You know, being a little homie, having a big homie hand you a gun and saying, "Oh, go do this on, on some dummy shit." You know what I mean? Like you're a grown ass man, and or excuse me, if if you are a grown ass man, you need to act like one. You know, period. Uh. Gotta have, you gotta be humble. Gotta, you know, gotta be respectful and mindful of your others that are around you. Because at the end of the day, just like my big homies tell me all the time, uh, you know, you cannot leave yourself. You know, you can't just put, you can't project yourself as this one way, one minded person. You know, you you just can't. You gotta be more versatile. You gotta be more broad with your stuff. Welcome to the Alcoholic Anonymous, a worldwide fellowship of men and women who will help each other stay sober. This is a closed meeting. You are welcome to stay if you have the desire to quit drinking. If you have had a drink in the past 24 hours, we ask you to only listen during the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> you know the bully. Right. On neighbor, bro. Oh, oh. Four times ten. Oh. Good game, bro. Right. Snoop Bank. Oh. Neighborhood foldies, what I'm playing. Oh. Catch a tramp, lag and tie him up and leave him hang. Nice. Smoke anything that's moving, squeeze until my ears ring and let it loose on all you scoopers, removing the ones you hang with. I'm nothing to play with, dog. I'm dark, gang, and rope. They ain't got my glove hat on, so it's no mistake and stay choking up the four fingers. Even on vacation, you were the cowards is breaking. I'm history in the making. Fuck anything you say, you stains are so retarded. Blue and gold bandanas, my hammer's ready for talking. It's 2017, bitch, I'm still crit walking. Give a fuck if it's a prop, I'm doing it in your part. Pistol on my waistline. Please give me thought yeah. I've been patiently waiting for the drama Let's get it poppin' Ay, fuck is wrong with these stupid ass cops Make one false move on the hood I'm a pop neighbor Yeah, and that's all rolling. And when I'm in that coupe You see me ripping it like it's stolen Hold up, and I be hard When I wake up in the morning It's crazy, she's still dancing It's four o'clock in the morning Ay, I hit the walk walking the function And after this, you know I'll probably be fucking I'm so trying to fuck with you gotta work for these dollars. She say she work for really trying to be from my wood. But I don't blame you at all. She see the crisp with it all. And now she fucking with it. Bitch, this is my Got that gas on deck. I'm a man of respect. Better keep that shit a check. Check it. Yeah, and that's a bet, bro. Yeah. Throwing up 40s when I'm hanging out the window. Right. They know they don't want it, so they playing that pretend. Who the, who the let it bang? All I leave is them extend, bro. She up in the rain while I'm blowing on this end. Cri Cripping blood gang, yeah, you know who we hitting for. I'ma let my flag hang for 12, they can get it. From the D's to the A's, 800, bitch, we got it, hoe. I don't think you funny, bro. Hope you got that money, though. What you looking sick for, bitch? The clovers ain't your end of the Pull up with that hammer, Lordy. I'm about to hand the homie. Better get to praying for your life, cause I ain't playing, homie. Hey, bitch, this Back in the day, I was only rapping about, you know, 40 this, 40 that, you know, uh, uh, putting K's after every single hood, every chance I got, even if there were hoods that I actually didn't beef with. And, you know, my homies would get on me about it. Like, look, man, like, I understand where you're at right now. It's cool. If you're good, you can do that. It's safe. You know, it's popping, but one day you're going to have to go somewhere where those people you're talking about are. You know what I'm saying? And That's a good home. You know, dog. bigger than, That's right, right. And bigger home. than that, you, all your, yeah, and all your fans are not going to be 40. All your fans aren't going to be neighborhood trips. You might have some fans that are from Hoover, that are from Brim, that are from this, that, and the third. And yeah, and I actually come to find that. Like, I went in the Respect the Glove, my music video comments, and I've seen people from Hoover's like, you know what? I'm from grooving, but this shit's hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, little shit like that. And it kind of, you know, it was cool. I was like, you know what? Shit, I've I talked with these people more than anybody else growing up, but they're giving me compliments. So it just, it just kind of opened my mind more to what they were trying to teach me as I, you know, when I was younger. Like, you know, I got a song called Neighbors, you know what I'm saying? That was literally made just two, three years ago. Um, and I was dissing the hell out of everybody, man. And, like, even though that's really where I was, in my head and did not care whatsoever now that i'm older you know what i'm saying i'm like i'm sitting there thinking like damn man <laughs> you know what I'm saying? i got i got five kids a whole ass family yeah damn. still 40s but you know what i'm saying family comes before everything and you know i'm sitting here 
I'm, I'm a big homie. Everybody's looking up to me, and I'm like, all I'm doing is showing my little homies it's all right to put a K after every motherfucking body and say, oh, you know what? We're bigger and better than them, so it don't matter. Nothing will ever happen, but, you know, that's where you're wrong because something can happen. You know what I'm saying? Tragic. Look at Nipsey Hussle, bro. Like, love him to death, and it was one of his own. You know what I'm saying? Not not just the crib, but supposed to be, in, you know what I'm saying? Another 6 0 and shit like that, bro. Like, you, you can't overlook anything. I, I, that shit opened my eyes more than anything. All my big homies always told me that. Like, you just can't keep yourself in that one motherfucking trait. Like, it, you, you got to. You got to be different, bro. You got to open up, be versatile, make different types of music for everybody. Yeah, I like that, man. That's a perfect ending, dude. Um, get, tell everybody where they can find you, specifically your music, and if you have any other business ventures that you want to, you know, promote. Now's your chance, man. Um, yeah, I'm sure you already said it all, man. Blue Nose the Bully. Um, you know, when you put the, you got to put T-H-A or, you know what I'm saying, they act like it's impossible to find me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Blue Nose the Bully and shit. Um, on YouTube, I do got a, I do got a SoundCloud and other little minor things, but I really don't mess with them too much anymore. You know what I'm saying? I'm just pushing myself on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to get seen on that. So that's a, that's my most active platform, I guess you would say. And I definitely got music coming soon. You know what I'm saying? Respect the glove was the last thing I made some months back, but that that ain't it for sure. I mean, I'm just taking a little pause. You know what I'm saying? Doing my family thing or whatnot, but. Who knows the bully, man? Don't forget it, bro. I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, man. I look forward to staying in touch with you, young boy, and I'll talk to you soon, all right? All right, man. Thanks, man. Peace, dog.